Hello, in this module we will see how to perform an ultrasound examination of the medial aspect of the elbow. Let's start with the anatomy. The medial side of the elbow can divide it anatomically into three layers. A deep bony and articular layer, an intermediate ligament layer and a superficial tendon layer. For the deep layer, on the medial aspect of the distal humerus, there are two notable anatomical structures. The round and prominent medial epicondyle, and just above it, a small bony ridge called the medial supracondylar ridge. The intermediate layer is made up solely of the lateral ulnar collateral ligament, which has three bundles. The anterior bundle, which itself consists of two bands, an anterior band and a posterior band. This anterior bundle spans between the medial epicondyle and the coronoid process. The anterior bundle is key to elbow stability, especially in valgus. There is also a posterior bundle that inserts on the posterior side of the medial epicondyle and extends to the olecranon and coronoid process. Lastly, there is a small transverse ligament that joins the two other ligaments, which was previously called copper's ligament, and contributes somewhat to joint stability. For the superficial layer, from top to bottom in the axial plane, we can locate the insertion of the pronator teres tendon, which is on the supracondylar ridge, then below and behind it, the insertion of the flexor carpe radialis. On the medial epicondyle, we can see the insertion of the flexor digitorum superficialis tendon, and behind it, the insertion of the flexor carpi ulnaris. Analysis of the medial side of the elbow is used for three types of examinations. Bone and joint indications, ligament indications, which means the lateral ulnar collateral ligament, and tendon indications, thus the tendons inserting on the medial epicondyle. To do this, make sure the patient is in the right position with the elbow flexed and forearm supinated. You can use a small table like this across from the patient, which makes it easier to do a comparative exam. But since this is not always comfortable, I like to have patients lie on their side like this, with the elbow flexed. This way, everyone is more comfortable to start the exam. The exam always starts by locating the bony landmarks. It is easy to locate the very noticeable bump of the medial epicondyle, which is rounded. If we use the frontal section, we can see the inferior humeral cortex and the humero ulnar joint space, which is clearly visible here, with the olecranon above the arrow. Now we reset the probe under the medial epicondyle, which has a rounded look and is the site of various insertions. If we go up, you can see how this cortex gets thinner and sharper, which corresponds to the supracondylar ridge, another tendon insertion site. Once the bony landmarks have been identified, it will be easier to analyze the tendons. So we find the medial epicondyle, which is rounded, and then the most proximal tendon, which has a very proximal musculotendinous junction. This is the tendon of the pronator teres, which you see here inserting on the supracondylar ridge. If you slide the probe down, a second tendon appears that is slightly under it and more posterior. This is the tendon of the flexor carpi radialis. It is hard to differentiate between this tendon and the pulmaris tendon. You can see that this tendon creeps further back. As we continue down, we arrive at the underlying tendon, which inserts fully on the medial epicondyle. It has a more oblique and more inferior trajectory. This is the tendon of the flexor digitorum superficialis. Behind this tendon's insertion, the tendon of the flexor carpi ulnaris inserts behind the medial epicondyle. It is very posterior and inferior, and in close contact with the inferior portion of the cubital tunnel. To conclude the tendon exam, it is important to evaluate the tendons without compression. 
We ask the patients to turn their back to the operator, elbow half flexed and forearm pronated. In this position, we can explore the medial epicondylar tendons without compression, allowing us to detect potential hyperemia in Doppler mode. This exploration is done in both the frontal and axial planes. After completing the longitudinal tendon analysis, the next step is always an orthogonal view. We can see here a V image. On this section, we can clearly see the superficial relationship of the flexor carpi radialis tendon to the deep flexor digitorum superficialis tendon. To increase the sensitivity for diagnosing potential tears, we ask the patient to make a fist, which can reveal tears that are not otherwise visible. In this position, the palmaris tendon is very difficult to see. We can locate the muscle belly of this inconsistent muscle, which is always very round and superficial. We then go back towards the supracondylar ridge and can see its insertion, which we couldn't see previously. It is in close contact with that of the flexor carpi radialis. After completing the tendon analysis in the axial plane, we ask the patient to stay in the same position in elbow flexion and supination. We find the medial epicondyle again and go down a bit. The anterior bundle of the ulnar collateral ligament appears. This ligament has two distinct bands. Here you can see the anterior band, which ensures elbow stability between about 30 degrees and 120 degrees flexion. If we tip the probe slightly, the longer posterior band appears. This one is responsible for elbow stability when flexion exceeds 120 or 130 degrees. If we reposition the probe on the medial epicondyle, we then shift to a sagittal section relative to the ligament. The posterior bundle is visible between the medial epicondyle and the olecranon here. If we gently tip the probe, this same posterior bundle appears, spanning between the medial epicondyle and the coronoid process. These two ligaments are joined together by the transverse ligament, previously called Cooper's ligament, which you can see here. It is located very close to the inferior portion of the cubital tunnel and makes up the distal floor of this tunnel. In this example, you can see that the radial insertion of the flexor carpi radialis tendon is partially detached. You can see the area of the partial detachment between the two caliper marks. Here, in a relaxed position, you can see the obvious hyperemia of the medial epicondylar tendons, which affects the tendon of the flexor digitorum superficialis. If we look deeper, you can see a roundish hyperechoic structure that corresponds to a hydroxyapatite buildup. We could aspirate it, like in this example, providing a treatment option for the patient. As for ligament pathologies, it is mainly the anterior bundle of the ulnar collateral ligament that is injured, especially during a forced valgus movement or even elbow dislocation. In this example, you can see diffuse thickening and the hyperechoic appearance of the anterior bundle of the ulnar collateral ligament. In this other example, you can see a partial distal tear of this anterior bundle of the ulnar collateral ligament. Here is what it looks like on a coronal MRI slice with a stir sequence, with edema visible around the lesion and thickening of the ulnar collateral ligament. Here you can see a complete tear of the ulnar collateral ligament with this proximal ligament stump, evidence of a grade 3 tear. In this final example, we can see evidence of chronic ligament injury. You can see this small hyperechoic area within the ligament, evidence of an old tear that is now in the chronic stage.
So, I just showed you what I'll call a checklist to follow when exploring the medial aspect of the elbow. The main indications are articular, tenderness and ligamentous. As you can see, we can assess these structures in a systematic way, reviewing the various tendons and lesions of the ulnar collateral ligament using a properly conducted ultrasound exam with the patient in the right position. Now it's your turn.